Hello and welcome. Here we are again. Seems like in the summer we're doing every other week. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see how it goes. But what do we have today? Hmm. As I said, posted yesterday, uh, we couldn't meet until earlier this morning. And we have a really interesting subject, a different perspective on being you. Now, what does that mean? Being you is a slogan that you hear a lot right now. And uh, it really, even before Marianne and I had our conversation with the realizations be right before, even at that point, I was saying, yeah, it's not going deep enough because it doesn't talk about the stories that we buy from others. And we mold ourselves according to these uh, stories. We try to uphold those images that those stories evoke in us. But you can go even looking from a diff totally different perspective. Mm. What if you, the infinite being, the infinite aspect, is your high self? And I'm cognitively saying, High self, not higher self, because I do not want to go into the new agey, uh, you know, there's a higher self and there's a lower self, often called ego, da, 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 da. No, it's the highest self you can be is, your, is the infinite being. And you, who you are right now, are a personality, one expression of the multitude of aspects that that high self has. And so from being willing to be a tool for that high self, I'm actually being me or being you, <laughs> depending <laughs> on how you look at it. But it really, and when we had that conversation and explored that, it totally broadened the, the scope and the space. And the conversation started because I woke up with that realization this morning. So you're getting brand new ideas that have been floating through my mind. <laughs> and what I realized is if I'm willing to be the tool of my high self, why the heck am I then doubting the whispers that the mm. high self is sending me? Mm. Why am I then doubting if I'm getting a do this or uh, do that, and that could be naming something, doing something, uh, whatever it is, but why am I doubting that? And I have been so much in the habit of, uh, no, that can't be, this is, this is too, uh, too risky. This is too far outside. Uh, why the heck? If mm. I allow it to be that way, and tomorrow I realize, eh, this was sort of heading down the wrong way. I'm not quite there anymore. Who says I have to stay on that road? Who says I cannot change and say, okay, what did you actually mean? Be clearer a bit. Give me a more exact message that I get. And then work from there. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what did you get out of our conversation this morning, Marianne? <laughs> so, so much. But now, within the second when you are, yeah, speaking, it was like, wow, yeah, but it is because what is 
infinite. What is the high, higher self? What is that all about? And I got also now as in high self, but that is in a way the broad casted me because I'm only a part of it, a particle of it, but also that high self are particles of there is all included. So it is interesting, as you mentioned, why would I vouch a whisper? Because it is still me. It's nothing different. It is still me. Mm -hmm. And I am that instrument by which I can experience that whisper, or I can receive that whisper, or whatever there is within. So I thought that it was clear, like, yeah, yeah, that's a side of thought that I have clear now by listening to you saying, how is it possible to doubt? What is doubt? What is it? Is that something that the tool does for control? because it mm -hmm. separates itself from uh, herself, himself, myself, you know, it's, it's, then there is that separation. And in truth, there is no separation. Yeah. But what if allowing being the tool, being that instrument that can prepare a beautiful, abundant life, a beautiful, abundant life of experience, or being the same tool, but only allowing a small, a small size of it, and then I have a, a small life. Yeah. It's and um, not, not only that, but... Uh, the way both of us are looking at the high self is it's not one thing that, uh, being that uh, has a certain personality. Mm. It's actually since both of us look at it that this is not the first time around that this body is alive and how many different personalities, how many different life experiences have we had? And that is the, the beauty of what can be experienced. Oh, the can, I, can I say, before it goes, before it goes, yeah. I saw within is like that memory is we use it so against us because we are not willing to receive of the body, the cellular memory, which is in truth guiding us also through, oh, remember, you experienced that already. What are you choosing? Are you choosing a, a different experience with the whisper or are you going for the same thing? But mm. that is to do those, all, yeah, all the different yeah. images. Personalities? Personalities, yeah. Different aspects, facets. Oh, I like the word facet. The high yes. self is a diamond, which has a multitude of facets. Yes, yes. And, and yes, somehow, Karina, this triggers something in me with that memory as, you know... <sighs> So many times you hear also, we can't forget the past, but it is more like we can't forget what was what was happened, but to keep it in that way, to keep it in that way, to keep it in that way, so we can't forget it. But what if that cellular memory has is also the tool within the tool we are to help us to experience even more and more and more facets of that one yeah, team. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then we can use the memory to expand on it. Or to say, what's another angle that I can experience that from? What's in it? Not to for, because we don't have to force ourselves into not forgetting because it is in our memory, in our cellular memory due to lifetimes. Mm -hmm. It is within. So could it be that we, from control, we forced ourselves nearly into not forgetting? I have to remember myself, but that's not the true remembering. That is the controlled, perhaps even little aspect or facet that you want to remember because it is fitting in all those other memories you forced yourself in, where we can choose to truly remember from what the memory, the cell memory is giving us, whispers us, because that is also part of the high self. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and it, what you're saying in a way brings up another part that was going through my mind this morning is uh, because I thought originally, oh, I'll go out and weed some uh, and put it in the garbage can because it gets picked up. Uh, and if I, since I woke up early, it would have been easy to do before the garbage truck comes by. And I didn't want to. And I didn't want to. And noticing that I don't want to. I was asking myself, is so what's this all about? And what I got was that this personality wants control over the high self by saying, I don't want to. I'm not going to do it. You can ask mm -hmm. or you can suggest mm -hmm. however much you, you desire, but I am, which then again puts me into separation. Yeah. Yeah. And that, Karina, becomes more clear that we separate so much, so many times, ourselves from ourselves, yeah. ourselves from so many particles, so many facets of ourselves, which when we don't do that, everything would flow so with so much more ease. And is that the true abundance that nature shows us? That every facet matters. Yeah. I mean, now that you said, I didn't look at, the, hadn't looked at that, but yeah, that is what nature shows us. Because nature, uh, a tree, doesn't say, I don't want to, you know, uh, that doesn't exist in nature. An animal doesn't say, I don't want to. It is, each being in nature is who it is. Exactly. And, and even if you see the tree, because that is more clear to explain, is like a tree always shines as it is there. It is present and it, it, yes, it goes. Some trees will stay green all, all day long, uh, every day of the year, but there are trees that are changing colors, letting go the leaves and then growing again. But it is in every facet of that process, it is shining, it is showing up, it is there. And it's not separated because it knows that what was is contributing to what comes. Yeah. And when we separate, 
Is it also there where we not allow what was to contribute to what comes? Yeah, but I thought we're saying that we need to learn from the past because otherwise we repeat the mistakes. <laughs> yes. yes, and when you do that, that is when you really believe that's what is told us, that is the forced control yeah. memory, which is not the true memory. And which is not necessarily, uh, when you said true, which is not necessarily what actually was. Because I remember, like, my siblings and I, uh, we all grew up in the same family. And we have such different perspectives of our parents. Yeah. We have such different perspectives of what happened, where we went on vacation, why we went there, and this, that, and the other. Uh, so each one of us has a lens through which we remember, which is not what actually was. Exactly. Exactly. And that is due to the, every person is a unique tool with unique access to the infinite of the being. Yeah. So it, it is when we see it as we are the two with the body here in the 3D, we are the two. So then it's logically that ever, um, every tool experience it in another way. As you see it in your kitchen, a knife has other experience itself with the food than a spoon because it touches the food in a complete other way. And even two different knives, because a knife is not necessarily a knife. One knife has a, a straight you. edge, one knife has a serrated edge. Yeah. Uh, it Right there, a spoon, like a cooking spoon, I have some that have holes so you can fish out the noodles out of the water. Uh, and with another spoon that is complete, you want to scoop everything. So you use the tools also depending on their purpose. Yes. Or the way and we are. And is it possible that the tool that we are a multi, how would I say it, as all those different possibilities of all those different tools within one tool. So we can go with that spoon with the holes in it and scoop something out of life and experience it and let flow some water through it in a matter of speaking. And then we go with a, how do you call that? The For the soup to get out the soup, so the, the bigger oh, one. Yeah. And then you, you have the small one. And in a way, it are all spoons, but it is also within us. Yeah. There, we are not only one tool. We have so many tools within us that we can use for several experience. There were the whispers of the high self leads us to and where do we force ourselves also in the idea that we have to function the way we think we are as define ourselves now i get clear this is the tool i am and i'm going to use only this tool in this way, because now I know this is the tool I am. What if that is also a lie? And also, are you then actually a tool of the infinite being? Or are you separate again? 
because it's a, we're back again to control. Exactly. And what if the infinite being in its infinite wisdom has an agenda that the tool called Corinna with her personality and her strengths and her weaknesses is a perfect tool for that agenda. Yeah. Am I willing to trust that? Yeah. And yeah. or do I need to stay in control of this is my life and I'm making those decisions and I like this and I don't like that. And therefore, I'm choosing this and not that. How? Which is it, which is differently when the whisper of the high self is letting you know. It's I don't like that in a way. If, if we speak the same language, I don't like it. That's a complete other way because then the tool will receive it as, hmm, that's not working for me. That's not for me because the whisper of the higher self is that's not the way where to to what you are saying, like, oh, no, I don't like this and this and this. That is coming from the separation and the control. Yeah. 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 But that is such a different view on uh, also uh, what's going on for me is this, this, it's changing my view of what oneness actually is and yes oneness with everything outside of me but me being one with my high self that can I be one with everything else if I'm not even one with my high self yes if I need to run uh, if I need to run the show and is that perhaps also the true freedom? The true freedom is, could it be that when we are one with ourselves, then we are also that infinitive energy? Mm -hmm. And is that wideness, that the broadcast of energy we are, is that the energy of freedom? And that being free has nothing to see with being free of rules, being free of material, being free, being free of... There is some other sense in it for me. Hmm. I mean, the what just occurred to me is from this reality's perspective, freedom is that I can do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. And what if freedom is actually being willing to be the contribution that is required for within the plan, quote, unquote, of the consciousness that is. the free Having the freedom to choose that and to fully commit to that. Instead of saying, oh, I don't like your agenda, I don't like your plan, I'm out of here. Which again goes back to separation. Mm -hmm. And somehow pops now in, but what is then, we are touching now the energy of freedom. Within that energy, what is free will? Because that's another energy, the free will and the freedom. Wow. It looks like 
we receiving in this moment an invitation to explore how we go with freedom and free will as now mm -hmm. for me freedom is like i have so much space around me and it's free because i am all that energy so if i am freedom will is in it i am will also but do i have free will as within the whispers if we allow ourselves really to get clear the tool we are and we receive and hear and go with the whispers as we can call it also going with the flow then we require the will to flow because that is the energy that pushes us in directions where the whispers wants to lead us. So what is that word free? What is that word free? What is the energy of the, the, the free? I mean, what just occurred for me is what if the freedom is that <laughs> what if I, in this body, actually do not exist. With, what if I am an expression of the infinite being in the third dimension? And mm -hmm. the infinite being has the agenda to experience in the third dimension as many possible experiences as he can. But what if each experience is a lifetime for me in the body in 3D? And this not being the first time around, how many lifetimes and how many different experiences have I already in this, has this, not I, has this body in 3D provided for the high self? And we misidentify that I, and the high self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what if I'm just to go back to the to the cooking example? What if I'm in this lifetime? I'm just a regular plain spoon. I'm not a uh, a holy spoon with holes in it. I'm not uh, a wooden spoon. I'm. Uh, I'm not a knife, I'm not this, that, or the other, I am. And the, how much freedom can there be if I truly accept that? Oh, in, in the, yeah, yeah. And that, then we, we can accept really also that everyone is unique as that tool. But even then, you are now that regular spoon and you acknowledge that and you accept it. And it's going beyond acceptation. It's more like, I'm going to fully be that regular spoon and experience everything what is there possible so, due to what it's not your first experience. It's not your first body. There is also memory of the other kind of spoons and knives. And so even being that regular spoon, you can take advantage in a way of all the previous experiences. So you, you, it is always and, 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 and 
all is included, that is for me showing up more and more and more. It is all included. It is literally a stupid to think that we are locked up in the third dimension. That is mm -hmm. so yeah. stupid to go with it because it's not about we are locked up. So when we are not locked in, we don't have to run out or to get rid of it or to survive or we don't have to do this. And that is that the, the true tool we are is that knowing that we can experience so much and it is contributing the all. Not only because what is that infinite being? If you are infinite, I am infinite, my neighbor is and my family is and etc. All are infinite. Then everything is flowing also together as a mix. Yeah, flowing into each other. That is, you know. What... But also all the particles, all the facets. That includes that all the the different dimensions, those those different vibrations, frequency also are included. Yeah. But. I'm not quite sure how to phrase it, how to talk about it yet. And I'm also keenly aware that my the high self, my high self, is only a facet mm. in the diamond of consciousness. Exactly. It's just one experience with all the experiences. Is only one experience in the totality of consciousness. And that's why we don't have to hurry. We don't have to rush. Yeah. Because it's a never ending, in a way, because it's infinite, it's a never ending experience. We don't have to rush. There is no and end point to it. Yeah. There is no end point, but when we really allow ourselves to explore it and enjoy it and emerge in it because we don't have to rush we don't have an end point we don't we don't have anything in that way we have everything we be everything we have and we be mm -hmm. and between that have and be everything, is that the part of the experience we come be in the 3D? Yeah. I like that idea. I have everything, I be everything, and I can experience it. And therefore, I require a tool and that tool is my body. So I can be everything I have also. And I can always be it, no matter where I am born, with who I am, where I am, what I am. Because every time in the 3D, the body is the tool. Yeah, is it just the body or is it also, I mean, you have a personality, I have a personality, which is not the same. So how do body, personality, and the way I mm -hmm. am in the world, uh, all of that, The for me, there is more than just the body. Oh, yeah, so much more. So much more. But as seen is in the tool to experience it, then we require the body. 
So for me also coming back uh, to personality. Is, is, is it just requiring the body or is it for my high self to experience the fullness? Is that also requiring my personality, my lenses through which I look at the world? Yeah, but in a way, it is. It is, but then it depends also on how are you going with personality. It's... Hmm. Because we can have so many personalities and the personalities are also changing within the experience, even in one lifetime, isn't it? As I that's see for myself. Not, I, my, that's where I'm not so sure yet. Yeah. I'm realizing. For me, in a way, as I see it now in this moment, and it can change, obviously, but in this moment, it is like my personality, when I was a little girl, looked completely different than what is now. And I can, I can um, still perceiving the aspects of that little girl's personality still are here, but don't require any longer to be expressed in the same way. So, so the changes, that's something we have to explore even more. What is personality? What are the facets? What, what is it changing yeah. personality? Because then images also coming in is the personality. Yeah, what is it? It's something we can explore even further. Hmm. What is it? We need another, we need another Facebook Live for that. Yeah, and, and what if this is the invitation up till the next one where we can explore that? And it's not for sure that we will do that within two weeks. It can be on another time. But the invitation also for the listeners is, what is it for you? What is yeah. image? What is personality? How do you go then? Yeah, you have still in a way, the same body, the, the body changes of form of a little more fat, a little more mus muscles. It's not about that. You have still the same body in a way, which one you got with your birth. But seeing how it was within your personality image or, yeah, depends and, and growing up and the experience, everything is changing. What can we discover about personality, true personality? Do we bring in one facet, one personality in this life to experience so many images of it? Or do we really change personalities in one lifetime? So that's an interesting thing. That's definitely an interesting exploration for another time. Yes. Uh, and, and in a way, that is what is fascinating me, what is keeping me engaged, is that, oh, I didn't look at it from that angle. I didn't explore that aspect. Uh, what else is there? Uh, to look at, to understand, to perceive, to, you know, whatever. Uh, and how much is personality also influenced by the stories that I grew up with? Who am I supposed mm -hmm. to be? Yeah. You know, how much do we mold personalities according to that? Yeah. And yeah, for me, it's it's intriguing. Now, I will sit with that question. Oh, what is definitely. really the, the difference between personality and image and, and what came first? And then, oh, yeah, it's, it's something to explore. It definitely is something to explore. 
Yeah. Let's see where we go in our exploration and see what we cook up next for next week. Uh, or do we meet in, a, in one week or in two weeks? Oh, we will follow the energy, Karina. Okay. I will just post if we meet exactly on, in a week or not. Uh, I will post on Monday. Hopefully, we can keep Monday. This this time, we had a national strike in Europe <laughs> interfere with Monday. <laughs> so, what else is possible? What do you, think? you know, that's the beauty of being alive, being yeah. alive, and being flexible. Not flexible. Being stiff. Otherwise, and is it? Is it possible, Karina, when we are really choosing to be alive, then flexibility comes within? That would be an interesting question in and of itself to explore. <laughs> yes. Oh, we have no ideas. We can't come uh, up with ideas to so explore. Boring. Yes, yes, yeah. we are. We are. Yeah. So, yes. Let's uh, give us information if if there is something uh, coming up by the listeners, we can yeah. take into the exploration. Always in the comments. Always nice we'll, to have it. We'll see what we do with them. Okay. See you. Bye. -bye. See bye, -bye. You.